to Reading Destination. I'm so glad you came back for another story. But it's not just a story this time. I mean, it is, but it's a, it's a chapter book. So we're going to read our second chapter book, and it's called The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And uh, I have a guest director today, and that's Avery, my granddaughter. So, now remember, chapter books don't have as many pictures as the other story books. And sometimes the chapters are a little bit longer than what we're used to. But So, let's get started. Chapter 1 is called The Riverbank. Mole had been spring cleaning all morning. He swept and dusted and painted. He worked until his back ached and his arms were very tired. But spring was in the air outside and it had made Mole restless. He suddenly threw down his broom and cried, Forget spring cleaning! Then he bolted out of his front door. He scraped and scratched upward through the dirt until at last his snout poked out into the sunlight and he was rolling in the warm grass of a huge meadow. This is far better than painting, he said to himself. The sunshine felt hot on his fur, but a soft breeze blew around him. After living underground for so long, he felt like shouting for joy to hear the birds singing. Delighting in the thought of spring without its cleaning, Mole made his way across the meadow until he reached the hedge on the other side. It seemed too good to be true. All around him, birds were building, flowers were budding, Everything was happy and occupied. His conscience didn't bother him one bit about all of the housework he had left unfinished. Instead, he felt happy to be the only idle creature among all the other busy citizens. After all, the best part of a holiday is not really resting yourself, but watching all of the other fellows busy at work. He thought he could not be happier when, as he wandered along, he suddenly found himself at the edge of a river. He had never seen a river. A sleek and twisting, gripping thing that gurgled and then left with a laugh. Mole was enchanted by the gleams and sparkles, rustles and swirls, chatter and bubble of the great river. He trotted excitedly along the riverbank until he grew tired and decided at last to rest. As he sat on the grass and gazed across the river, Mole noticed a dark hole in the opposite bank. Something bright and small twinkled down in the heart of it, vanished, then twinkled once more, like a tiny star. Then it winked at him. And so, Mole knew that it was an eye peering at him. Slowly, a small face began to grow around it, like a frame around a picture. It was a brown, round little face with whiskers, small ears, thick, silky hair, and with the same twinkle in its eye that had first attracted his notice. It was a water rat. The two animals stared at each other cautiously. Hello, Mole, said the water rat. Hello, rat, Mole said. Would you like to come over? Rat asked. I suppose there would be no harm in that, Mole said, being new to the riverbank way of life. Silently, Rat unfastened a rope and tugged at it. He stepped into a little boat, which Mole had not noticed earlier. The boat was the perfect size for two animals. It was blue on the outside and white on the inside. 
Mole was fascinated by it, even though he did not fully understand its uses. Rat rode across the river in no time and helped Mole step gingerly down into the boat. To his surprise and delight, Mole found himself seated in the stern of a real boat. What a wonderful day, he said, as Rat shoved off and took the oars again. I've never been in a boat before in all my life. Rat could not believe it. Never been in a boat? What have you been doing then, he asked. Look ahead, Rat, cried Mole. It was too late. The boat hit the bank full force. Rat lay on his back at the bottom of the boat, his feet sticking up in the air. Then he picked himself up with a laugh. Mole, if you don't have any plans for this morning, why don't we go down the river together and make a long day of it? He suggested. Mole couldn't think of a thing that would make him happier. He leaned back blissfully into the soft cushions and said, let's start at once. Hold on a minute then, Rat said. He climbed into his hole and reappeared carrying a huge picnic basket. What's inside? Mole asked. There's cold chicken, replied Rat, and cold tongue, cold ham, cold beef, salad, rolls, lemonade, soda water. This is too much, Mole squealed. It's what I always bring along on these little outings, Rat said. Mole was charmed by the new life he was about to enter. He trailed his paw in the water and began to daydream. Like the good little fellow he was, Rat did not disturb his friend. I like your clothes, old chap, Rat said after some time had passed. I beg your pardon? Mole said, startled out of his daydream. You must think I'm awfully rude, but this is all quite so new to me. So this is a river? The river, corrected Rat. What a jolly life you must lead here by the river, Mole said. By it, with it, on it, and in it, Rat said proudly. It's my world, and I wouldn't want any other. What it lacks isn't worth having. Oh, the times we've had together. No matter the season, it's always full of fun. What's over there? Mole asked, pointing to a wooded area near the water meadows on one side of the river. That's the wild wood, Rat said cautiously. We river bankers don't venture there very often. Aren't the people who live there nice? Mole asked a bit nervously. Well, replied Rat, the squirrels are all all right. Some of the rabbits are all right too, but they're a mixed lot. And then, of course, there's Badger. He lives in the heart of the wild wood. Nobody interferes with him. They better not, he added. Who would want to interfere with him, Mole asked. Rat hesitated. There are other types of animals, weasels, foxes, ferrets, and so on. I mean, they're all right, sometimes. I'm very good friends with them, but there's no denying that they break out at times. The fact is that they can't really be trusted. Mole changed the subject. He knew that it was against animal etiquette to discuss trouble. What is beyond the wild wood, he asked Rat. Beyond the wild wood is the wide world, Rat said. But the wide world doesn't matter to us. I've never been there and will never go there. If you have any sense, 
You'll never go. At last, here's a nice place to have a picnic lunch. They left the main part of the stream and headed into a landlocked lake. On either edge, green grass sloped down and snaky tree roots gleamed below the surface of the water. The beauty of it all was too much for Mole, who held up both forepaws and gasped. Oh my! Oh my! Rat tied the boat alongside the bank and helped Mole safely ashore. Then he took the picnic basket out of the boat. Mole begged to be allowed to unpack it, and Rat more than happily let him. <laughs> While Rat rested, his friend excitedly took the items from the basket one by one and gasped, Oh my! at every one. When everything was set out, Rat said, Dig in, old fellow! And Mole was very glad to do so. After some time, Rat noticed that Mole's eyes had wandered. What are you looking at? Rat asked. I'm looking at a streak of bubbles that is traveling along the water, Mole said. That's odd. Suddenly, a glistening snout popped up above the edge of the bank and Otter lifted himself out. Greedy beggars, he observed. Why didn't you invite me, Ratty? This was a spur of the moment outing, explained Rat. By the way, meet my friend, Mr. Mole. It's a pleasure to meet you, said Otter, and the two animals were friends from that point on. The whole world seems to be out on the river today, said Otter. I came up here to get some peace. There was a rustle. Suddenly, a striped head with high shoulders sprang from a bush behind them. Come out, old badger, cried Rat. Badger trotted forward a step, then grunted, hmm, company, he said, and disappeared from view. He hates society, explained the disappointed rat. We won't be seeing any more of him today. So, Otter, who's out on the river today? Toad's out in his brand new boat, replied Otter. Rat and Otter looked at each other and laughed. Whatever Toad takes an interest in, he quickly tires of, explained Rat. Then he starts in a new hobby and does the same thing all over again. He's a good fellow, but he has no stability, remarked Otter. Just then, a boat flashed into their view. It was Toad. The rower was short and stout, and he was splashing rather poorly with his oars. But he was working very hard. Rat hailed him over, but Toad was concentrating on the work at hand. He'll tire of the boat very quickly if he keeps splashing like that, Rat said. He surely will, giggled Otter. A mayfly swerved unsteadily against the current. With a swirl of water and a splash, the mayfly was gone. So was Otter. Again, a streak of bubbles swirled across the surface of the river. Mole knew that, according to animal etiquette, he should not discuss the sudden disappearance of a friend. Well, Rat said, I guess we should get going. I wonder which of us should pack the basket. Oh, please, let me, Mole said. So... Of course, Rat led him. Rat rode gently homeward, murmuring verses of poetry to himself and not paying much attention to Mole. Mole was very satisfied with the events of the day. He already felt at home in the boat. He said to Rat, Ratty, please, I want to row now. It's not as easy as it looks, Rat said with a smile. You will need to take some lessons before you can row the boat on your own. 
Mole thought quietly for a moment. He began to feel very jealous of Rat, who was rowing so strongly and with such ease. Mole felt that he could row just as well. So he jumped up suddenly and grabbed the oars from Rat. I don't think that's a good idea who had been daydreaming and was so taken by surprise that he fell backward off his seat and onto his back. Mole took his place and snatched the oars with confidence. Stop, cried Rat from the bottom of the boat. You'll tip us over. Mole swung the oars back with all of his might and made a great attempt at rowing. But he missed the water. His legs flew up over his head, and he landed on top of Rat at the bottom of the boat. He was so alarmed that he tried to grab the side of the boat, but splash! Over went the boat, and he found himself struggling in the river. The water felt very cold, and Mole was soaked to the bone. Just when he had risen enough to see the sun shining through the surface, he began to sink again. Oh, no! Then a firm paw gripped him by the back of the neck. It was Rat, and he was laughing. Rat helped Mole to the shore. Poor, miserable Mole, wet and ashamed, trotted about until he was almost dry, while Rat dove into the water to recover the picnic basket and the boat. When they had set off again, Mole said in a low voice, broken with emotion, Ratty, my generous friend, I am very sorry for my foolish, ungrateful behavior. It makes me sick to think that I might have ruined your beautiful picnic basket. Will you overlook it this once and forgive me? That's all right, Rat said cheerfully. What's a little wetness to a water rat? I'm more in the water than out of it most days. Forget about it. I really think you should come and stay with me for a little while. My home is very plain, but it's comfortable. I'll teach you to row and to swim. Mole was so touched by Rat's kindness that a tear came to his eye. When they got home, Rat gave Mole a robe and slippers. He built a fire in the parlor to warm and dry his friend. Rat told river stories that were thrilling to an earth dweller like Mole. How exciting, Mole cried his eyes lighting up. Soon after dinner, Mole became very sleepy. Rat showed him to the best bedroom in the house. That's very kind, isn't it? Mole felt very happy knowing that his new friend, the river, was lapping at the sill of his window. Mole had never dreamed that his life could be so full and so much fun. He hoped that Rat would show him everything there was to see and do on the river. This was for Mole the first of many wonderful days. As the summer went on, the days grew longer and more interesting. Mole learned to swim and to row. He had become part of the joyful river life. If he listened closely, he could hear the wind whispering in the willows. He felt that it was calling to him, inviting him into an enchanted world where anything could happen. That's the end of our first chapter. I hope you're enjoying it. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time a new video is posted. And of course, be sure to share with all of your friends. Bye-bye for now.
flying around my face. I hear a little buzz and I can't grab it. It's bothering you. Question about your hat. Is it supposed to be ripped like that? Yes. <laughs> He's trying to get me. Look, his bud's already. Look at that. See how big that is?